The government will be tabling a special motion to make it compulsory for members of parliament to do asset declaration. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Datuk Liu Vui Kiong, said the requirement, which is based on the principles of accountability and transparency, will compel all parliament members and their families to make a statutory declaration of their assets. If the motion is accepted, it will apply to all Day One Rakyat members, their husband or wife, children below the age of 21, and related trust holders. If the motion is passed, those who do not toe the line would be found in contempt of parliament. Liu said that since all the MPs from the Pakatan Harpan government have declared their properties in SDs, it was now time for all other members of Dewan Rakyat to do so. The motion was met with resistance from several opposition MPs. According to reports, PAS's Deputy President Datuk Tuan Ibrahim Tuan Man said that the party would not support the motion unless it became legislation. He added that Islam does not allow people to publicly disclose their wealth as it could lead to security issues. The World Bank has cut its 2019 GDP forecast for Malaysia from 4.7% to 4.6% amid unresolved trade tensions, a sharper than expected slowdown in larger economies and market volatility, which will pose near-term risk to growth. In a new report released today, the World Bank said given the uncertain external environment and subdued business confidence, policy actions should aim to strengthen fiscal buffers, facilitate private investment and ensure adequate social protection for lower-income households. In the medium term, it recommends measures to boost human capital and to increase public sector revenues. It also proposes reforms to reduce Prichajaya's dependence on unstable oil-related revenues. Presently, the World Bank points out that Malaysia's revenue from personal income taxes and consumption taxes both fall well below the average levels seen in upper-middle-income economies and high-income countries. The bank says reforms to widen the tax base should be accompanied by measures to expand the social protection system. Savings from the proposed targeted fuel subsidy framework, for instance, could be used to expand core social welfare programs. Green Packer founder Puan Chan Cheong has returned as Group MD and CEO in a management reshuffle aimed at growing its digital ventures business. Puan had previously been the company's non-executive director. Previous CEO Tan Kayen is now Green Packet's executive director. In a statement, Puan said Tan and the team did a great job to prepare the telco and technology player for the future. He said aside from propelling business growth and development, his plan is to implement several people-focused initiatives and drive a deliberately growth culture company. Meanwhile, Tan, who remains CEO of Green Packet's e-wallet issuer Kipu Pay, will drive the group's fintech business. Puan founded Green Packet in 2000 and led the company to its listing on Bursa Malaysia's main market in 2005 before relinquishing his role as group CEO to Tan in 2014 when he assumed the role of CEO of Packet One Networks Malaysia. He is expected to help turn things around at the loss-making firm, which has been bleeding red ink in all but one year in the last decade. Tan previously told The Edge that the the company aims to break even by 2020 financial year by expanding revenue and improving margins. Presta Riang, which is suing the government for terminating the 3.5 billion ringgit skin project, has bagged a smaller contract from Putrajaya. In a filing to the bourse, Presta Riang said its subsidiary, Presta Riang Systems, received a letter of award dated June 28th from the Finance Ministry. The 22.94 million ringgit contract is to supply Microsoft software licenses, products and services to the Ministry of Education. The contract is for a period of one year. It will be managed through the Education Alliance Agreement to all schools until March 9th next year at 11.22 million ringgit and via enrolment for education solutions to all agencies under the Education Ministry until July 2nd, 2020 at 11.72 million ringgit. In its suit over the loss of skin, Presser Yang is seeking compensation of 732.86 million ringgit for work done before the contract was terminated unilaterally via a letter dated December 11th, 2018. Presser Yang said the amount is based on the contractual formula provided for in the concession agreement.
Lembaga Tabung Haji recorded a 22.1% year-on-year fall in operational expenses in the first quarter of 2019 to 204 million ringgit. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Datuk Sri Mujahid Rusufrawa, says this is the outcome of steps taken to cut spending by the Pilgrim Fund, which include renegotiation of contracts, introduction of a centralised procurement system, as well as refinancing of key projects to reduce finance costs. Mujahid says LTH renegotiated all contracts, especially on the supply of IT infrastructure, saving 9.3 million ringgit a year. Meanwhile, the funds moved to introduce centralised procurement, reduce operational spending and procurement by the headquarters and branches nationwide, which resulted in 2 million ringgit savings annually. It also cut spending on events by 1.5 million ringgit a year, refinanced key projects and cut interest charges on some of them to 1.9% from 3.7% and cancelled what it deemed as non-beneficial or low-potential initiatives.